Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia's Prime Minister supports the regional political response to the risking. The Miku Secondary School takes parents to the classroom for better students. A young St. Lucian claims the top prize at the Tika Caribbean Entrepreneurship Challenge. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arquero. St. Lucia's Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Chastney, is advocating for a more unified approach to dealing with the looming threat of de-risking in the region and the potential loss of correspondent banking relations. Prime Minister Chastney spoke on the issue at the recent sitting of the OECS Assembly in Antigua, Barbuda. Here's Janelle Norville. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, recently attended the fourth sitting of the OECS Assembly in Antigua and Barbuda. At the sitting, the heads of OECS strive to address the daunting challenge faced by financial institutions in the Caribbean in recent years. That is the growing trend being adopted by large global banks that serve as correspondent banks to local financial institutions to severely limit or terminate their correspondent banking relationships with these local or regional banks. This practice is considered a form of de-risking, whereby business relationships with clients or categories of clients considered high risk are restricted or terminated. Prime Minister Shastney highlighting the relationship between de-risking in the region, the potential loss of correspondent banking relation, and the issue of blacklisting by the European Union indicated that the OECS and CARICOM heads must embody a collective approach when seeking to address such matters. It's amazing that when regions of the world want to justify a position, how quickly they can do it. The EU on the blacklisting does not want to speak on a bilateral basis. All dialogue must take place on a multilateral basis. And we continue to make the same mistake in my mind, and that we are not expressing our egregiousness towards what is taking place against us sufficiently. And the only way that small countries like ours can express our voice is at the UN and is how we vote at the UN. And there are times when collectively that we must vote a particular way, not for the motion that is on the table, but sometimes to make a point. St. Vincent and the Grenadines Minister for Finance, um, Economic Planning, Sustainable Development and Information Technology, Honorable Camilo Gonzalez, described the issues of the EU's blacklisting and de-risking as an assault on island territories. He noted that islands within the region formed a large percentage of the countries being de-risked. After several attempts of dealing with the matters in a bureaucratic, individual manner, Gonzales indicated that it was now time to utilize a direct, collective, political response as a consequence of blacklisting, the risking in the region, and the potential loss of correspondent banking relations are far-reaching. We are small, open economies, all of us, and our economies close immediately if we lose correspondent banking relations. So far, financial institutions in 12 Caribbean countries have had the corresponding banking relations of at least one of their local banks terminated or de-risked. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norvell. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, in collaboration with the University of the West Indies and the OECS Commission, hosted the Leadership Forum in St. Lucia under the theme, Changing Mindset, Embracing Transformational Leadership. The OECS Commission, through its Education Development Management Unit, rolled out its four-country development agenda in education through its Education Support Project in 2016. The two million U.S. dollar project sought to, among other things, review the appraisal instrument for principals and their job descriptions to ensure they are aligned with leadership standards, develop a program tailored to school leaders within the OECS, and to review a handbook for school principals. A critical component of the project was to strengthen leadership and accountability among school leaders. The graduates of that program formed part of an education forum. While 80% of principals across the OECS, they are trained graduates, it means they've earned a first degree at a bare minimum, most of them do not 
or do not have or are not certified in leadership and accountability. And so we sought to better strengthen that cadre of persons. And so today, this activity is the culminating activity for this component or this activity under the project. Representing the Ministry of Education at the Leadership Forum was the Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Kendall Kodra. Today, our education system has made great leaps towards one of the essential imperatives for ensuring a quality education system, which is the retooling and reskilling of our leaders in the system. And we all know it has been said over and over again that the quality of an education system depends on the quality of our leaders and teachers. And over the past years, tremendous efforts have been placed in initiating projects, developing concepts. But today, one of these components has come to fruition. Delivering the feature address was former Chief Education Officer Fortuna Anthony, who spoke on the importance of transformational leaders. Today I ask you, are you in the mindset mode to change? Are you prepared to be the visionary who values others and therefore see yourself as being the fertilizer which helps your plants to flourish? Or are you the hoarder who is so afraid that the knowledge gained, that it will all remain with you because you do not wish somebody else to achieve it? Knowledge that is not shared is a waste of time. You only know how good you are as a leader if you can share your knowledge and effect change. Approximately 125 school leaders were trained and certified in leadership and accountability under the project. The Miku Secondary School has recorded tremendous success with a pilot program aimed at improving student behaviors by enhancing parenting skills. Chevroy Marius has the details. Parents from the Miku District are now equipped with the necessary tools needed to be more effective functioning parents. To accomplish this task, Administrative staff from the Mikud Secondary School, in collaboration with the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, hosted a three-month training workshop from March 14th to June 12th, 2019 at the Mikud Secondary School. Principal of the Mikud Secondary School stated that over the years, the Mikud Secondary School has encountered many cases where parents appear to be hopeless and helpless. But with the advent of this training workshop, parents are able to develop more positive, effective communication parenting skills. Last week, as I said to you, when we spoke, when I spoke to your children, unknown to you, and I asked them questions in order to find out whether or not this period was worth it, the responses they gave was all the encouragement we need. My mother does not shout anymore. My mother miss, my mother not cursing me again, huh? Yes, Miss when my mother gets vexed, she's taking a deep breath and then she's talking to me. The workshop's vision is geared towards student enhancement and development through effective, positive and authoritative parenting habits. How do we know that it has been important to you? How do we know that it has been important to your students, well, your children, our students, because they tell us. Last week, I'm upstairs and two Two of our girls came. So just casually, I said, um, how did you think last night's session was? Remember last, last night we were here with the children? One looked at me and said, Miss, don't stop that program. I said, what? What do you mean? Miss, don't stop it. Miss, my father, my father just hugging me, Miss, all the time. Participants also emphasized the need for the program to be continued. I spent most of my time looking at my mother's children. But being here make me learn a lot of different things which I did not know how to be a parent. So I am proud to be here and then Miss, I want to ask, when will the last, the second one be started? <laughs> Mr. 
Because it makes me feel like when I meet somebody, when somebody speaking to me, because I always have an anger, but being here, it changed the anger. It changed my behavior. It changed my life completely. And then I'm grateful for all the sessions that I attended. I did learn a lot. To date, I can say it has changed the way that I viewed my son and the way um, his behavior, the way I view, viewed his behavior and the way I reacted to his behavior. When I was getting dressed this evening, my daughter came to the room and she was like, I think you should ask Auntie Dini's to continue the sessions. So I was like, hey, hey, just so? She was like, mommy, you don't know how you're speaking to me these days. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you for the sessions. And as the father said, I'm looking forward to the next. I think we should also encourage our teachers to take some of those sessions just so that the home, the school, and the community is working together in changing our children. Improved parenting skills and strategies would thus mean a reduction in parents being called in for maladaptive behaviors and students engaging in less destructive behaviors. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, I am Chevroy Marius. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Hey, Dante, what are you up to? I am just reading about Jeff. Jeff? Who is Jeff? Is he one of your friends? You can say that. Jeff is one of our friends. Jeff stands for Global Environment Facility. Ah, it's an acronym. What does Jeff do? Jeff is the largest funder of projects to improve the global environment. 182 member governments make up Jeff. Oh, really? Do you know that St. Lucia has benefited from Jeff since 1991 to today? Whoa, tell me more. Yes, many national projects were funded by Jeff. Projects involving biodiversity, climate change, international waters, land degradation, the ozone layer, and chemicals. Boy, how do you know all these big terms? Because I have a smart daddy. The Global Environment Facility, investing in our planet, nation, and our community. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome everyone to your update from youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Plans are progressing for the staging of this year's School Sports Awards, set to be held at the St. Mary's College Auditorium on Friday, starting at 10 a.m. Staff of the ministry met Monday morning to continue looking at logistics for the staging of the annual event on the calendar of the ministry. Schools and individual student athletes will be recognized for their outstanding performances in school sports events over the past year. Minister responsible for Education, the Honorable Gail Rigobert, and Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, are expected to deliver addresses as well as Director of Sports, Patrick Matrian. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports is also involved in the execution of the CARICOM 10K, due to be held on Sunday, June 30th. CARICOM member states have been invited to send two official runners, including host St. Lucia. However, the wider St. Lucia population can participate by registering at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. Sunday's event is due to start at 7.30 a.m. There are also two other components being held that morning, a 5K from the Mardisil Corinth Junction and a 1K from a location on the Vidbutai Highway adjacent to Rennick and Company. The 10K starts outside the Marina Haven Hotel in Rodney Bay. The CARICOM 10K has been initiated as a precursor to the heads of government meeting. That's your update from Move Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The final of the Tika Caribbean Entrepreneurship Challenge concluded in Martinique with a young St. Lucian claiming the top spot. President Alfred Marie Gian awarded 19-year-old Sophie Klein with the winning prize 
a 10,000 euro grant to develop her project, Joie, which aims to transform the world of education by integrating virtual reality. The Tika Caribbean Entrepreneurship Challenge is organized by the Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Martinique in partnership with the Territorial Collectivity of Martinique, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, and the Caribbean Export Development Agency. The Caribbean Entrepreneurship Challenge aims to sensitize youth on cooperation in the Caribbean, encourage young entrepreneurs to mobilize their skills to serve their country, and promote entrepreneurial innovation. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Yes, Anusha, this is your boy Mark 11 telling all the drivers on the road. Be careful on the roads today and always roll if a designated driver. If you're the driver, drink responsibly. Go and come back home safely. Out. A message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness, Human Services, Gender Relations and this station. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur Ta Nisha. Monsieur Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information. Uh, gouvernement cette le GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale, PIA, NTN, comme vous êtes Nouvelle Acquéole, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Si vous êtes ici, le ministère de l'Agriculture a observé qu'on y a pour préserver le pays à côté des animaux et des plants qui ont importé de mauvaises maladies. Quarantine Awareness Week, ça c'est mon salaire, vous m'avez dit, c'est côté cette ci qui a mis à son garde contre les plants et les animaux. Pour ne pas entrer en pays, tout le temps, les autorités ne sont pas assurées de s'en sortir contre ces maladies. Le ministre de l'Agriculture, honorable Ezekiel Joseph, a déclaré que les pièces de monde et les organisations qui ont dû porter les animaux et les plans à cette ci ont été pour trouver la permission du département de recherche et de la subdivision qui ont responsabilité pour faire les animaux au ministère de l'Agriculture avant sa fête. Selon honorable Joseph, en temps passé, cette ci a souffert en lot à cause des plans et que ces animaux qui ont apporté de mauvaises maladies en pays, le ministre agricole l'a dit que ça a affecté la production et que ça va les manger nous en pays cette ci Le ministre a avoué qu'il a toujours consulté et puis l'autre organisation pays pour essayer de régler et de corriger la situation. Le gouvernement qui a travaillé avec Chai et puis Chai, l'autre organisation, qui est notre ANC Port Authority, qui est le qui le ministre Trade, et puis, customs pour assurer que nous ne pouvons pas quitter ces qualités de peste et les qualités de disease là qui ont affecté la production agricole de cette liste pour entrer. Moi, je veux dire, comme ministre agricole, à ce behalf de ce département, ça, merci à Pil pour toutes ces monnaies qui ont fait nous qualité de ce poids. Mais nous aussi voulons croire sur cette liste quand nous avons observé ces semaines pour nous éduquer les gens et puis pour nous comprendre qui manière vous porter ces produits à entrer à cette liste et puis si vous ne pas fait une manière nous qu'à advise vous qui manière ça affecter à recoller cette liste parce que nous tous savons que à recoller important pour cette liste et puis à recoller c'est une c'est économique activité à qui a impact à la rural community et puis qui a impact économique cette liste Monsieur Joseph qu'a fait un grand appel pour cette liste suivre avec cela pour protéger l'industrie à recoller Kai Palema, we set man passé your most legislation qui ni pour faire et puis company qui engage the business international pour régler à de façon côté commencer le 1er janvier 2019 n'importe chef bureau yon company pa ka trouver traitement de préférence accord. Ça veut dire yo ka trouver taxe en bas loi taxe pays ya. C'est premier ministre cette c'est honorable Alain Chasney qui présente mon seul législation. Selon le Premier ministre Chasney, la loi, en l'année 2018, qui était fait possible pour que les compagnies trouvent des bénéfices hors taxes pour juste l'année 2021, pareil existait pour ces business là encore. Le Premier ministre Chasney remarque que la décision est très importante parce qu'il a une loi compagnie qui a exprimé ses bénéfices en ces arrangements de taxes en temps passé qui par à présent pour conduire l'opération et puis plus de vitesse et dit que la législation là car il occasionne yo pour entrer plus facilement en mouvement nouveau salaire alors yo ka sorti à dans ça qui était applicable pour juste 2020 
et trouver yo après ça à des arrangements qui ait plus en bénéfice selon premier ministre Chasné ce compagnie ça là qui capable après ça pour payer taxes quand une compagnie cette ci et trouver l'autre bénéfice taxes qui en place au business international yo division pour réformation secteur public en département pour service commission à payer ces versant j'ai invité les représentants hot programme des assistances pour travailler en service public cette ci pour aider faciliter leur consultation pour établir programme ça là en cette ci en service ça ça c'est un instrument qui sorti hot département des services publics cette service ça avec la grenadier il y a un assez objectif consultation ça là c'est pour pointuer façon des acceptances et que c'est pour aider placer clarté et mieux comprendre des programmes ça là à dans un haut degré en service ça avec la grenadier division des réformation en secteur public service ça j'ai apprécié Hauteur va les programmes ça là en cette ci et c'est un qui qui très important pour les gens programme pour assister les travailleurs cette ci j'ai trouvé bon félicitations en région Caraïbes et aussi j'ai trouvé qu'on des excellence en conduite et service pour les clients programme là qui a pour consultation pour aider renforcer des groupes professionnels les travailleurs gouvernement et pour assister yo qui ni brise assistance personnelle et l'autre façon qui a affecté la vie et travail yo programme là qui a offert conseil pour yo et la famille qui prie assistance des diverses difficultés problèmes de alcool santé finance violence domestique problèmes de mariage la peine problèmes de maladie chagrin à parmi l'autre programme d'assistance pour les travailleurs gouvernement été établi le 10 mars l'année 2016. Est-ce que ça nous attend bout de nouvelle là monsieur madame? Moi quand merci au temps pour garder la bonne invitation. Je ne peux moi encore si dire conserver la vie d'un gars pour cette autre nouvelle à Coyol. Après ça, moi quand vous vous présenter Nisha. Merci au Pearl Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Moist and unstable conditions in the wake of a tropical wave will cause a few widely scattered showers over the region during the next 24 hours. Two other tropical waves located over the central and far eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 2.57 p.m. and will be high again at 9.28 p.m. The tide for VFOR Bay was low at 4.24 p.m. and will be high again at 10.35 p.m. The seas moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Tuesday at 5.37 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.